Good evening, Team Kestaba, and welcome, rest of YouTube. Today, we're diving into how to design steel connections. So we're stepping back from the PE example problem today, and we're going full depth, full steel connection example. It's gonna help you just as much for the prep of the PE exam, and it's also gonna be a real world example that you see a lot in the professional world. We'll be doing step-by-step -step walk through through the code, that's right, the AISC 15th edition steel manual, that teal one, that beautiful one. If you have the maroon one, don't sweat it. They're basically a one for one. There's some small variations and changes in there, but that's not what we're getting into today. We're getting into how to apply it to design your steel connections. So here's the breakdown. We're gonna go full depth to start, going through each one of the potential failure modes, checking all of them per code. And then at the end, we're gonna throw in a little spicy secret that you're all gonna wanna know to make this process a whole hell of a lot faster. So stick around, you're gonna wanna know all of it. All right, see you in there. What a doozy, Team Kestava. So here we are. We have a steel wide flange column, your W14 by 90, uh, and you have your steel W16 by 50 wide flange beam that is connecting with a shear tab to your column. Uh, that shear tab is welded to the column flange and the web of the beam is bolted to the shear tab. Everyone following along? So that's what we got going on here today. We have all of our parameters. We have our weld sizes called out. We have our bolt sizes called out. We have our type of bolts. We have spacing of bolts. We have plate dimensions. And we have the size of our beam and column respectively as well as if we take a little look, see, I'm gonna, oh shoot, you probably can't see that. Boom. As well as end reactions. Uh, dead load, we have eight kip reaction and live load induced 25 kip reaction. So how do we begin? You have a choice. We can go LRFD or we can go ASD. Um, ASD, come on, ASD is for the scrubs. They're, we're not doing ASD right now. Um, spam it down in the chat, down in the comments if you say otherwise, but we're rocking and rolling with LRFD because that's how we do. So that means we got to do load combos, right? Because we have a dead load and a live load uh, reaction given to us. So we have to throw that into a load combination. Remember all this, our processes for the PE exam. It's going to be 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live is going to be our governing case. If you don't know that off the top of your head, you can check out ASCE 716, chapter 2. So let's plug in 1.2 dead, which is 8 kips, plus 1.6 live, which is 25 kips. Now these are just reactions at the end. Um, so they're actually happening in drawing green. They're coming in right there. They're being transferred to those bolts from your web of your W16 by 50. So we are assuming no moment transfer in this condition. It's just purely a shear connection. So count that out. That equals 49.6 kips. And that we can actually just call VU, your ultimate shear demand. All right, let's start checking shit. Let's first do for bolt shear. This one is pretty straightforward. So let's just cross it off the list early. And that means we are now going to jump over to ASC steel manual. See you in there. So here we are, available bolt shear. This is on 7-22, table 7-1. We already have this tab for the PE exam. So we, we flipped here in what, two seconds? Awesome. Okay, so we know that we have uh, A325 bolts. That is actually what group A stands for. So if you need to write that down, you know, jot it down in your book, that's a good thing to remember. Uh, group B is A490 bolts, and we know that we have an N-type thread condition, and we know that N means that our threads are within our shear plane, so which means we're going to get less capacity in shear from our bolts, because those threads means it's a reduced section, and that reduced section is sitting in the shear plane of our bolts. So, make sense? All right. So what we do, we have three quarter inch, 
right there. And all we got to do is come on down. And we know for single, so loading, S is just single, D is double. And that double would mean something like if you had, sorry for these, how big this is, but if you had like two knife plates or something that you're loading up, you have, you have two shear planes. Um, so the bolt is in double shear. That's what that means. So we know that we are just single. Why doesn't she love me? And we come right over and we just get our capacity, our shear capacity of a single bolt. We have 17.9 kips of capacity per bolt. So let's go back. We have, like we said above, four three quarter inch diameter, A325 type N, which equals 17.9 kips per bolt. So multiply by four, that gets us phi RN equal to 71.6 kips of capacity, which is greater than VU of 49.6 kips. So our first failure mode is okay. Next, let's check. For each check, I'm gonna do a different color. I'm gonna do red, blue, green, and black, and I'm just gonna keep rotating through, all right? So blue is going to be next. Let's check plate shear. And this we're going to say, because there's two cases, you have yielding and you have rupture. So first we're going to do yielding. This leads us right to chapter J in the back. And look what we got here. Design of connections. What are we doing today? Exactly that. So let's take a little jaunt through here because we're going to be in this check section a lot. We get to page 16.1. Dash 137. We scroll down to section two of it. So this is J4, section two, strength of elements and shear. We have our two conditions. You have A, which is yielding, and B, you have rupture. So let's first do shear yielding. Given the following equation, uh, R sub N equals 0 0.6 FY AGV. AGV is your gross area. And uh, Phi, for this case, is just 1.0. Omega, if you were doing ASD, is 1.5. It's all given right there. So that's everything we have, uh, and we have no unknown. So let's head back, and let's plug it all in and solve it. So Phi Rn is going to be equal to 1.0, 0 0.6, part of the equation, 36 KSI, that's Fy, AGV. AGV is going to be equal to, let's scroll back up, is going to be equal to, if we were to look and take a section through this way and take a little cross section of this steel plate, because the plate is what we're checking right now for this failure mode. So if we were to take a little section AA, well, we know the height of this is one and a quarter. Then you have three inches, which means you have another three inches and another three inches, and then another one and a quarter. So three times three is nine, plus one and a quarter times two, which is 11.5 inches. And we can confirm that by our plate dimension call out right here, 11 and a quarter inches. And we know the thickness of our plate is right there, one quarter. So PL stands for plate, and then the first dimension that's after that is the thickness of that plate. That's always, that's standard in uh, engineering drawings, always. So AGV is just simply going to be one quarter inch times 11.5 inches, which is going to equal 2.875 inches squared. All that's going to equal 62.1 kips, which is greater than VU. Because again, VU is 49.6 kips. So we're okay again. On to the next one, on to the next one. Swap it over to green. Now we're gonna do rupture, shear rupture. Let's head back to the AASC steel manual. So we're gonna stay put in the same page that we were on previously. And now we're just gonna go down to B here. And we have for shear rupture of the element, you have the following equation. Uh, phi this time is 0 0.75, omega if you were using it is two. So they are different. Uh, phi Rn, or Rn is going to equal 0 0.6 Fu times A and V. 
you look down below, A and V is the net area subject to shear. All right. So what does that all mean? Well, we're gonna we're gonna digest it, but let's head back into the into the uh, problem. So phi R N for rupture is equal to 0 0.75. Again, that's phi this time. 0 0.6. This is gonna be 58 ksi. So this is F U. So instead of yielding, this is rupture. And this the F Y and F U. So that those are go back to red. So typically your shear tabs are grade A36 steel. That's like mostly a constant. If you needed something stronger than that or something just different than that, it would be a pretty unique case. Um, almost always it's going to be A36 steel. Don't just assume that, but that is more often than not what you're going to be using. A36 steel. We know Fy equals 36 KSI and Fu equals 58 KSI. If you're lost on where to find those, AISC, I know the 14th edition off the top of my head, which is the maroon, is table 2-4 slash 2-5, and that's where you're going to find that, those material properties. And again, F sub Y is your minimum yielding stress of the material, and F sub U is your minimum tensile stress of the material. And I do want to point out one last thing, not too big of a tangent here, but F U you will find for A36 steel is actually a range of 58 KSI to 80 KSI. We almost always use 58 KSI just to be safe, I want to say, because technically you could get um, mill certs back that show that the steel might be 58 KSI. And if you were designing for something higher than that and you're banking on it being higher, you could be in a real big crunch and not in a good spot. So um, that is the range that the mill is, is allowed to produce between. And technically, they could have all different steel plates that could be within that range. Okay, tangent over. We're back in it. We now just need... A and V, so your area net. Let's scroll back up because it's just a little bit different. This one, you might be saying, well, isn't it, what could be possibly different with this? There's nothing, nothing different. Well, so we're actually going in a different spot than where the blue dash section is shown. We're going to use green here, and we're actually going to cut through section BB, which means we're going to go right through where the bolts fasten to the plate, which means they needed to punch holes in the plate in order to slot the bolts through the holes. So they're taking steel away through that plate section. So A and V is going to equal, and this time we're going we're gonna to hash it out. So one, two, three, four. So to find A and V, you might just be saying, well, can't we just do three quarters of an inch, since that's the diameter of each bolt, times four, because there's four bolts, and subtract that from 11.5. And be done with it not so fast we can't forget there is uh, each hole that is milled into steel or punched out of steel however you want to, whatever floats your boat has a one eighth oversize to its diameter of the bolt that's called out for that's basically for tolerances so that means our true diameter of each bolt is three quarters of an inch plus one eighth of an inch because it's one sixteenth all around is is the uh, the additional tolerance that's given to that bolt hole and let's see if I I guess I could quickly draw it out here but then I'm going to erase it so if you had this as your three quarter inch bolt the hole if I totally mess this up for you guys is actually eh, one sixteenth of an inch larger all the way around that bolt. Get all that out of here. So that is going to equal 0 0.875 inches. We know that there's four bolts, so multiply by four. Gets you 3.5 inches. Now we have to subtract that from our total depth. That equals eight inches. And then we need to multiply by the thickness of our plate, which we know is a quarter inch. That gets us 
2 inches squared. If we go plug that in, what does that get us? Phi Rn is going to equal 52.2 kips, which we know is greater than Vu, so we're still okay. Vu again is uh, 49.6 kips, so let's not, not forget that. So it's just a tick under 50. So if we're over 50, we know we're definitely good. Okay, that is shear rupture. Next, we have to check block shear. Now for block, now for block shear, what we're going to be doing here, I'm drawing a close-up of a part of the steel plate where the holes are. And what's happening is you have the force pushing down right there, trying to shear that plate off. And what's happening is you could have a potential failure mode like this, where since your bolts are all bearing on that steel plate, so they're trying to rip that plate off in shear, but you can also get what's called block shear in this case, which means you have one area that's experiencing shear and another area that's experiencing tensile failure. And these two combined failure modes localized to the plate is what's known as block shear. Block shear can have all different types of geometries depending on bolt configuration, what your plate looks like, if it even is a plate, it can, it can happen on angles, it can happen in any piece of flat steel basically. So there's, and this would be the piece of plate that would get ripped off or sheared off of the shear tab. So we need to figure this out. Well, I'm gonna erase these because we need to define some stuff here. So this right here is actually known as ANV, because that's area net for shear. And then this right here is known as ANT, area net tension. What are those? What's going on? Why do I need those? Let's head over to the steel manual and let's see what we got. See you in there.